Hey guys, this is Billy from AdultCello.com and today I have three elements of cello playing that you should start doing earlier than you might think. So the three elements I'm about to introduce are kind of contrary to what I might be saying to a child learning the cello. This is specifically for adult learners. The idea I had for this video was basically I was thinking about the typical trajectory that kids have learning the instrument and how a lot of times adults are sort of forced into that like same learning path. For adult learners, there are a few areas where I think it's really critical to get an early start and it, it really helps build momentum and move things along. So let's jump right in. All right, so element number one is ear training. What is ear training, you ask? Well, ear training or oral skills is a music theory study in which musicians learn to identify pitches, intervals, melody, chords, rhythms, solfeges, and other basic elements of music solely by hearing. In other words, basically, <laughs> really simplified, probably overly simplified, you want to be able to hear the note you're playing in tune, to be able to hear if you're in tune or not, and you want to be able to hear the following note you're about to play in tune so that you know kind of where you need to go. So, I said earlier than you might think, when should you start working on ear training? Yesterday. Like as soon as possible, you've ordered your rental cello outfit to come to your house, be delivered. While you're waiting for the cello to show up before you've even played a note, get started on ear training. So why is ear training so helpful? Basically, it speeds up so many processes in your cello journey and as you're learning the instrument. It reminds me of that movie, Field of Dreams, you know, the, the slogan you keep hearing, if you build it, they will come. For music, it's like, if you can hear it, you can find it or you can play it. When it comes to topics like intonation, shifting accuracy, you know, mo it, most of the stuff with concerning the left hand, the ability to hear the pitches clearly in your mind, in your inner musical ear, before you've played them or as you're playing them, that's what's gonna basically tell you if you're in tune or not. And so you'll have this really easy, clear understanding of, you know, where your fingers need to be and whether they're actually there. All right, so let's take a musical example. Let's say I'm shifting from on the A string from B in first position to F sharp in fourth position. Now, I could do that over and over again and just kind of try to physically memorize where my finger and my arm is in place in, you know, in space and then where the next note is in space and what the distance is. If I didn't use my ear to help guide my hand, it would take, I don't know, weeks, years. I, I, it would take so long because you're just, there's so many ways to miss a little sharp, a little flat. Now, from my ear training, I recognize that that interval is a perfect fifth. And then further, I hear, I can hear the note ahead of time before I go there. It's just like you have like a, a brain in your finger all of a sudden and it can actually, your, your inner ear will guide your finger to the right note. And even if you miss by a little bit, you'll find that your finger will make little automatic adjustments if you hear the note really clearly in your mind. So bottom line, ear training will speed up the learning process tremendously. All right, second element of cello playing that I think you should start earlier than you might think is shifting with the left hand. So what shifting is basically is when you need to play a note that you can't reach in the current hand position you're in, you move your entire left hand into a new hand position and that the movement but from one hand position to another is called a shift, okay? When should you start shifting? I would start shifting as first position is beginning to solidify. And I'm careful when I'm saying that because I don't think you should start shifting on day two because you know, it's like, Everything's wet cement. You're, you're building the second floor and it's just gonna collapse. But what I think kids do often, and, and you know, it, it works with kids, is that they'll stay in first position, either on violin or in cello, for a very long time. Be, and it just solidifies everything and then they eventually have to shift and they just shift, okay? With adults, I think often I've encountered adults who kind of didn't get going on shifting early enough and there, there can sometimes be a psychological barrier that builds up and you just feel like, I don't wanna move my hand. Like I just took the tape off my cello a, a couple weeks ago. I, how am I gonna know where I am in space? Like, ugh. So for me, when I work with adult students, I'll, I love the Piatti cello method, but the entire first book, all the first etudes are in first position with uh, extensions. 
but they don't really shift. And I supplement as early as maybe etude number five out of 30 or so. And I'll, I'll supplement with Rick Mooney's position pieces and just get us playing in new positions because I want my students to have the feeling that moving to a new position is an exciting thing and also that it's you don't have like one position that's comfortable which would be first position and then all these other ones where it's like ugh, like that's the part of the pool that's only cold water like ugh, I hate going there you know you should feel as comfortable in second third fourth you know etc as you feel in first position and I for me with adults I think that means get there sooner rather than later. This probably goes without saying, but just as like a little caveat, if you, as you start shifting early, you know, maybe in the first, second month of your cello journey, depending on how much you're practicing, please just try to make sure you're getting good information, whether from a private teacher, or an online course, whatever your information source is, you just want to make sure that you start building in good shifting habits right away. All right. And third element of cello playing that I would start earlier than you might think is playing in thumb position. Okay. This is a, this is a very thorny one for a lot of adult learners um, because they wait too long. All right. So first off the bat, what is thumb position? Basically when I'm playing in thumb position, instead of having my thumb behind the cello's neck, it comes out and most of the time there's always exceptions. It lays across two strings, uh, depending on which string I'm playing, which two I'm playing on, um, it's going to lay across two strings and then the hand shapes in such a way that your thumb on the lower string forms an octave with the third finger on the upper string. Okay, that's a very general definition and again things change but that, that would be a good working definition of thumb. Why I don't talk about where it happens is because if you bring your thumb out, say, to make an octave back here, my, for right now, when I make this octave on to E and E, you know, my thumb is, is playing the E that I would play in first position. So that's way down on the neck, but because my thumb is out and I'm using it, it's technically thumb position. When people talk about uh, thumb position, usually they're talking about the higher range of the cello. Okay, At, after a certain point, I can't play notes comfortably without releasing my thumb and bringing it with me. Okay, I, I can't reach the notes otherwise. Okay, so when should I do this? For If it were me, I would start learning a little bit of thumb position as you're finishing up your conquest of the lower neck positions. Okay, so again, if we're talking about a, like a, the analogy of a house and cement, the cement doesn't have to be completely dry, but it's, you know, it's a solid foundation in the lower neck positions. Go ahead and start working on thumb position a little bit, okay? The reason is you can get a huge psychological barrier. Depending on the type of music you're learning and the pace you're taking and how aggressive you are on your journey, you can go years without ever having to play in thumb position, depending on the pieces you're being assigned or you're assigning yourself. The longer the time goes by, in my opinion, when I see adult learners and they haven't even tried thumb position, it just, there's this like yee kind of feeling to it because, you know, it's generally what we're talking about when we say that word is the thumb position word. We're, we're talking about way up high, so already, uh, I don't know this area very well on the cello. And then my thumb is out now and I have to use it. Is it going to hurt? Where do I put it? What do I do with my hand? It feels weird. I don't like it. And then so you just kind of avoid it and it just, the problem gets worse and worse. Like I've talked to people and it just, from talking to them, I can tell that, you know, that area where you would basically have to be using thumb, it's almost like there's a wire fence across their fingerboard and that's like the end of their property line. And then past that is wilderness with snakes and briar patches and you, who knows what. I don't want to go there. And you don't want to feel that way. You want to be, feel comfortable like, you know, exploring the entire fingerboard of the cello. So here's my tip. When you start learning thumb position, I would just make it a really simple exercise. You start on, you put your thumb across on the harmonic A and harmonic D. beauty of this is that you're now legitimately high up on the on the register so it feels like you're truly doing thumb position which you are and 
because your thumb is on harmonics, you don't have to hold the notes down with the side of your thumb uh, as you will have to in other thumb positions where it's not a harmonic. That will allow you to really build a comfortable hand position without getting overly fatigued from just, you know, having this new uncalloused part of your thumb being sliced, it feels like it's being sliced in half by a, a cold metal string, okay? So just start there and then you just make a one octave scale. Thumb one, two, three, thumb one, two, three. It's the same finger shape on both strings. It's a one octave scale, but you've now kind of gotten used to thumb position, what your hand is gonna feel like, okay? And what it feels like to play notes up there. And now basically the, the spell is broken. And so even if that's all you do for a long time, you can just keep coming back to that and, and you've now formed thumb position, the correct hand shape, you've played the notes up there and at least it's not just fenced off. Bottom line, you don't have to obsess about learning, you know, thumb position all over the fingerboard and going, but just getting a little bit familiar with thumb position in one hand position will make psychologically, I believe, it'll make a big difference on your approach to the fingerboard down the line. So there you go, there's three elements of cello playing that you might wanna try earlier than you think. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate it.